Welcome to another message from the Gospel according to Mark from the Greek language. We're coming to the point of the trial and crucifixion of our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ. The Hebrew word Messiah means Hamashiach, or anointed one. In Greek is Ho Christos. The Hebrew kingdom was divided under Solomon's time and it became a great idea, an ideal for the Messiah delivered to come and to bring Israel out from underneath the heel and the thumb of all of the nations. The word salvation spoken of in the Psalms and the prophecies of Isaiah and Jeremiah was interpreted as referring to deliverance from Israel's enemies and all threatening world powers Psalm 69 35 Isaiah 25 and verse 9 Jeremiah 42 verse 11 the Hebrew people tended to overlook and ignore such prophecies as the suffering Messiah and Isaiah 53 and Psalm 22 Major Old Testament passages indicating that the Messiah would be born of a virgin, Isaiah 7:14, in Bethlehem, Micah 5 and 2, and he would be a descendant of the house of David, 2 Samuel 7 and 12. He would be a man of sorrows, Isaiah 53 and verse 3, who would suffer rejection of his own people, Psalm 69 verse 8, followed by the betrayal of a friend, Psalm 41 and verse 9. And it's the only place, the only disciple of Christ that is prophesied in the Old Testament. And a crucifixion between two thieves, Isaiah 53 and verse 12. As the Messiah died, his spirit would be commended to his father in Psalm 31 and verse 5. He would be raised from the dead in Psalm 16 and verse 10 and to take his place at the right hand of glory on high, Psalm 110 and verse 1. Jesus fulfilled these prophecies as prophet, priest, and king. But he came to deliver mankind from sin and the reign of sin that binds us in death. In Luke 4, 18 and 19, Acts 2, 36 through 42. He said, my kingdom is not of this world in John 18, verse 36. He told Pilate, that he ruled by serving, Matthew 20, 25 through 28. As a priest, he offered not the blood of animals, but himself as a full and final sacrifice for all sins, John 10, 11 through 18, and Hebrews 9 and verse 12. Now we're in the 67th verse of Kata Marcon, the gospel according to Mark. 66 says while Peter was down below in the courtyard one of the serving maids of the high priest came and now 67 is where we begin now Kai Udusa Tom Petron said ma there may no me known Emma Blepsasa Alto Lege Kai Xi Metatu Nazarenu Esa Tu Esu. And having seen the Peter, this maid, having seen Peter, nominative singular feminine, second heiress, participle active, the Peter, tone patron, accusative singular masculine, definite article, accusative singular masculine word for Peter, Petros. And this Petron here. Thermonomenon. We get our word thermometer from this word here. Thermono. It is accusing singular masculine. Present participle middle voice. He was warming himself at the flame, at the fire. And having looked inside and at him, Nominee singular feminine, first heiress, participle active, 
having looked at him and inside of him, she says, she says, look at that, she says, and you, with the Nazarene, you kept on being. With Jesus the Nazarene. You kept on being with Jesus the Nazarene. Second person singular and perfect indicative middle voice. Yes, he did. He followed Jesus from his heart. And yes, he was the imperfect man just like all of us. A lot of people say I'm like the Apostle Paul. I say I'm more like Peter and, and Jacob than anybody else in the Bible. We're all sinners saved by the grace of God. Peter was a leader among men, but he made a lot of mistakes. 1468, Hode er Nesato, Legon, Hote, Oida, Ute, Epista, Me, C, T, Legais, Chi, XL thing, XO, Ace, To, Proilonium. But Peter, he denied with his own volition, middle voice, saying, and he kept on saying this over and over again, I'm in the singular master and present participle active, neither I have known, neither I have known, nor I understand, or was caused to understand you, what you say. And he went out, outside, into the outer court, the vestibule of the court, unto the pro alion. Outside, unto the pro alion. 1469. Kai he paidiske, irusa, auton, ex auto, Pauline legain tois, pares tosen, hote, Hutos ex auto esten. And the maidservant, the young maidservant, the young damsel, having seen him, she, she began for herself again, ex auto, that word comes from arco, she started all over again right from the top, is what it says, right from the top, again, back again to say to the ones having stood by having stood by paristes susan that comes from para, para and histamine because this one this one right there out of them he is he's part of this group and he keeps on being part of this group third person singular present indicative active from Amy there Eston, he keeps on being part of this group. Now again, Hode, Pauline, Eneto, Kai, Meta, Micron, Pauline, Hoi, Parestontes, Elegon, To, Petro, Alethos, Ek, Auto, E, Kai, Gar, Galileos, E. But the little maid again, After a little while, she kept on, or he kept on dying, but the one, that is, but the one, Peter, he kept on denying. And after a little while, again, the ones having stood by, they kept on saying to the Peter, Alethos, without a shadow of doubt, that's what it really means, without a shadow of a doubt, no shadow. Alethos, a little adverb there, without a shadow, no shadows. Truly, out of them you are, and you keep on being. Indeed, for a Galileos you are. A Galilean you kept on being. <clears throat> now these people could tell that he was a Galilean by his, the way he spoke, by his dialect. Galileans were ignorant of good grammar. And they used too many words to say something. 
They used too many words. There were too, too much verbal to explain very plainly and clearly and quickly what they said. They used too many words. They're very verbose. And this really got under Peter's skin. He really, he's, he's scared. Peter is really afraid. 1471, the whole day ex auto, anathematizing, kai, o nini, hote uk, voida, ton anthropon, tutu, hon legete. And he began for himself. Now this word here, anathematizing, this means to take an oath. This anathema means to place upon a, a wall. Anathema means to curse. What it means is if you took something in an ancient temple, this is a pagan temple, and you dedicated it to that God, you could never redeem it back again. It was on the wall forever. It was on it landing against or upon that wall of that temple forever. It could not ever be redeemed back. It was unredeemable. Now what Peter is doing here is he is swearing by heaven and saying, if there's a God in heaven, let him strike me dead if I'm not telling you the truth. And let him curse me and let me be unredeemable. That's pretty strong words, people. Let him curse me and I be, may I be unredeemable. And to swear, to fence himself in. That's the word there. It means to fence in, to take an oath, to fence in. Oh, Nina. To fence himself in because not I know that man, this, whom you say. What a horrible, horrible experience. This must have been for Peter. To, for him to say, may God of heaven curse me and make me unredeemable if I know him. Remember a long time ago, the oldest book in the Bible is the book of Job. And Job's wife got discouraged with Job and the way that God was allowing Satan to, to curse him, to plague him. And she said, why don't you just curse God and die? Well, that's almost what Peter did here. Kai Euthus ek deuteron olektor Ephonason kai ane menese ho petros to rema hos epan auto ho asus hote prin electra dis phone phone se tiris me apo aper nese kai epi balon ek la Boy, this is like us. When we deny our Lord and Savior in our acts and our actions and in our minds and our lives. And immediately out of the second crock, he sounded. The second cock, the second rooster, he sounded. Now let me tell you something. Roosters crow 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock, and 9 o'clock. 24 hours a day, every 3 hours they crow. That's God's alarm clock. The Lord told him, here's 9, 12, 3, 6. Peter was, or the Lord was arrested over here after 9 o'clock. He said, now Peter, you say you won't deny me, but you will deny me three times before the cock grows twice. Between 9 p.m. and 3 a.m., he was going to deny the Lord three times. And that's time, God's time. With these little animals the little bird that he gave to be our alarm clocks. And immediately out of the second cock, when he sounded his voice, and he remembered, third person singular, first heiress indicative active, he was called to remember the Peter, the words, the saying, the declaration, the speech, the edict that Jesus said to him, the Jesus that before the cock twice he shall sound 
three times you shall deny you shall deny and you shall void me out of your life and having thought upon having called these things to mind he kept on weeping he wept intensely he wept intensely now let's go for a few more verses and and we'll close this message Kai youthus proi sim bonion poi asantes hoi arcares metaton perbuteron kai gramation kai holon ton sanhedron de santos ton eson ape neg con kai prael do con pilato Jesus' best friend in the whole deal was Pilate. He didn't forsake him. Pilate tried his best to release Jesus. He tried his best. He did everything that he could do as an administration, as administrator of the Roman Empire in this cruel city to turn Jesus loose. But they wouldn't allow it. And immediately early, the Sanhedrin the whole council, the same bolio, that means the, the, the together council, the plotting, consulting bunch, those that consulted illegally in this illegal trial, having uh, prepared and formed, look at that, having prepared beforehand, having worked out beforehand, this wicked deed, it's the illegal trial, a sham, a miscarriage of justice, this mob rule, the high priest with the elders and the scribes and the entire Sanhedrin having bound to Jesus, they led him away and they betrayed him over or handed him over to Pilate. Matthew 21, 1 and 2, 11 through 14, Luke 23, 1 through 5, and John, which is not a synoptic, but John 18, 28 through 38. 15, 2. Chi epi rotation. Alton ho pilatos. Si a ho basileus ton eudeon. Ho de apocrites auto legesi leges. And he interrogated, he interrogated him, the Pilate. Now let me tell you a little bit about Pilate. Pilate wrote a real letter. Many people deny that it's Pilate's letter because they don't want to say that Jesus is the Christ and that Pilate was a believer. Pontius Pilate, according to Pilate, in a legal letter to his father-in-law, to his father-in-law, which was Caesar, all right? Pontius Pilate wrote a letter to Tiberius stating that, that he had come to know Jesus, that he had talked, had him come into his court or into his home, that he was a great man of God, a great sage and prophet, greater than all the Jews, that he had blonde hair and blue eyes, he described it. He was a very humble and stately man. Beautiful. Totally, desperately different than the Jews that he had come to know as wicked men with wicked hearts. That he had begged him to lay off of his strong speech toward them. That they were trying to kill him or do him harm. But, he said, I will always protect you. Jesus told him, Prince, you came for this time. When it comes time for me to deliver it into those wicked hands, there's nothing you can do about it. Pontius Pilate said, oh yes I will. And he said, no you can't. He wrote that letter to Tiberius. 
and told him that truly this was the king of the Jews and this was the Messiah and that he should be recognized as a god among all the other gods of the Romans even though he was the true god he said to call him a man would almost be blasphemy and this is the man that is questioning Jesus now a believer Pontius Pilate's wife which was the daughter of Tiberius Caesar by a concubine she said have nothing to do with this righteous man have nothing to do with him she knew too as far as we know from Tiberius and external histories and writings Pontius Pilate's letter was greatly read by many people at that time Tiberius wrote him a letter back Tiberius became a believer and Tiberius did everything he could do to protect that little church and following, following of Jesus against those Jews that he could do as long as he was in power. And he interrogated him, the pilot. He said, are you the king of the Jews? And of course he was. He knew what the lineage was. He knew that, that uh, Herod was an imposter. He knew that Anthony and Cleopatra had put Herod on the throne where Joseph's father should have been the descendant of that throne. Are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus, having answered, having been called to answer to him, so he says, you said it, you said it. Yeah, I am. You know that. You know it before. You know it now. 15 and verse 3. Kai kata katerg gurun Altu ho arteres polo. And they kept on accusing repeatedly him, the high priest, about many things. They repeated accusations against this man, and Jesus knew they were all lies. Or not Jesus, but Pontius Pilate knew they were all lies about Jesus because they were jealous. 15 and verse 4. Hode paletos Pauline. Epirota auton lagon uk apocrine uden ide posa si kadar go rusen. But the pilot, again, he kept on questioning, he kept on interrogating him, saying, Why aren't you answering anything? Hold, how many accusations those that are accusing you how many those that are accusing you fifteen and verse five Hode Asus Ukete Udain Apocrite Hoste Thamazane Ton Pilaton but the Jesus no longer said anything he had no more answers he had already talked to Pilate before and he told him, when my time comes there is nothing you can do for me. Nothing he was called to answer so as to marvel, to cause, to be astonished, Pilate. Pontius Pilate marveled at the self-control of this man, of this great prophet. He was also astonished at the observed claims of the Jews against him. Pilate was hoping that Jesus would answer these charges and that Pilate himself in some way could exonerate him from them. Our Heavenly Father we thank you for another message from your word. Father, thank you for all the blessings you give us. Thank you for our Savior. And as we look at his life and look at him before Pontius Pilate and those wicked Jewish people that were condemning him without reason, without nothing but perjury, they didn't want our King, our Savior. Yet one of these days they will. We know it's in your plan that they will come to you finally and beg for forgiveness for crucifying their king of glory. 
In Jesus' name, I send this message out. And forgive me, Father, please. In my Savior's name, Jesus. Amen.